Hello fellow engineers, welcome to another episode of our survival on Triton. So let me show you something. This display right here is showing us the list of components and its amount, the current and the desired amount. Now I have configured it in a way that the desired amount is the necessary to build the fire prime that is the spaceship that is going to be built here on Triton. Now, if you are able to read what's on the screen, you may notice that components such as thrusters, superconductor and others are still lacking. Uh, according to the tools I'm using, I still need 138,000 cobalt ingots, 11,600,000 ,000 gold ingots, and uh, be a little bit more than 3,000 platinum ingots. Oh, and also more than 20,000 silver ingots. So there are still plenty of work to do for my rover and mining drone. Anyways, that's not the only thing we're gonna do in this episode, and let's go outside, I will show you something. So one of the reasons why I made a second crane was because the previous was too low and uh, it was not able to move freely when uh, the spaceship will be ready on the hangar. So imagine I come back from space, I need repairs and I cannot freely move the robotic arm. That will be a problem. So as I mentioned before, there are still plenty of ores that I need to extract, so let's go outside one more time with this rover. One thing that I forgot I wanted to do was to modify the rover as I have the latest Wasteland DLC and wanted to change the wheels, but I can do it as soon as I get back. Thanks to the new blocks, I also have in mind uh, to revisit a lot of my builds, but that will be outside the survival series. So I guess I will delay it until I finish this first season and then I will dedicate some time to that. We are now heading to the same area we were before, as over there we have also gold and silver that I need. The order of the uh, Autodox script, Splug uh, have suggested me to um, show the script in action also while uh, the rover is moving because this script is capable of docking even if um, the docking port is actually in in movement. Uh, I forgot, <laughs> so I'm sorry. I will try to remember the next time. Um, after. Uh, collecting cobalt I also collected a bit of uh, gold and I realized something that I didn't notice before that is um, the amount of ores that you can extract in the same area and in the same amount of time it seems that rare minerals take more time more effort to be extracted um, so it's gonna be quite a pain to collect all the gold and silver I need all right, back to the base. Home sweet home. Finally, the ramp is working fine. The loading platform 2 is working. The drone is not being destroyed every time I enter, so... Cool. So as soon as I park the rover, I want to check how much I have collected because I know I have filled all the four large uh, containers but I do not check how much it was in terms of kilos so let's let's have a look so let's take the elevator go to the control room and see how much we have collected then here we are Back to our LCD screen. So let's see. 182,000 kilos more or less of cobalt. That's a good amount. Let's see how much 
uh, it converts into ingots and let's see if I have to make other runs just for cobalt <clears throat> okay so as we are back to the base I can get rid of this first crane that I made before as I mentioned this one uh, do not allow free movement when the ship will be built and will need eventual repairs so I'm going to lock it with this merge block and this will allow me to remove the blocks without having it fall down onto the base all right so there now it's uh, this part of the overhead crane one with the base and we can continue let's put the um, grinding head I have scripted the position so I can switch the heads without uh, taking too much time with the maneuvers so the more you know a script the better uh, it is the more you like it for example I discovered that with MarmoS you can use a command to print the exact position of uh, the, the robotic arm in this case so that it's not too complicated to configure the rest position for the head switch now with the grinding head already uh, equipped we can start grinding down piece by piece it's a long process but thanks to the three heads compared to the first version I think it was a little bit faster so while dismantling this crane uh, you may notice that this part this wheel uh, is moving back and forth and this is because um, for some reason when you build something on the main grid uh, the wheel the rotor starts to plank yeah it it go crazy like uh, sometimes it goes off the rotor falls on the ground and explodes just like a bomb so that's why this kind of build is quite complicated and needs a lot of tweaking to make it work properly whoa what's happening here the um, piping for the other arm went crazy that's what happens when you don't share inertia tensor it's pretty cool anyways no damage was done to the base i forgot that it, this could happen so now i need to fix it let's see how so when you do not share inertia tensor and the hinges do not have enough strength of course they tend to go downwards depending on the gravity that's what happened so i will increase the strength of the hinges in order to retract all this uh, monster here <laughs> it's like a big serpent or a chinese dragon i don't know whatever you like the most so let's do the same on all the hinges and increase the strength not too much because otherwise you can have adverse reactions and it is retracting cool again it looks like a living creature boom oops yeah it's okay now i can grind it down possibly without any problem and yes i was able to grind down all this part without any problem oops something happened i heard an explosion let's have a look oh nothing major there are just pieces over there so let's continue so one thing i've noticed is that uh, given the distance between each uh, grinder it really depends on the size of the block uh, how fast you can grind it down when i manage to use the three it's definitely faster than one bigger grinder now let's get rid of the dragon's head 
I mean the crane arm. Although it's kind of sad, so much effort to do it and now I'm grinding it down. But yeah, it's for something better. Mm, well, I should have disconnected it from Marmalade script because as I grind it down, it started to move by itself. It's not ideal. Um, so as I needed to be careful on what to remove first, I uh, it took quite a while, to, and um, also the, the head was moving to the low. I had to reconfigure the script to have a higher speed. Nonetheless, I still had a few problems, like this one. <laughs> okay, here I was listening to some space radio, I think. And uh, yeah, I'm looking at the garbage I left on the ground. So we are removing the last few bits of the first crane. And that's uh, mostly it. We are done with this grinding phase. But something else happened as you can hear. This is the same problem I had with the other crane. I had to add this um, piston with uh, two rotors pushing uh, to the sides. But we timers to release every few seconds. That was enough to avoid a clank destroying this structure. Now, also for better stability, I am adding two gyroscopes with overridden uh, control that should keep it more stable. Let's test it. It does look better, even there's still some wobbling, but uh, I think it's enough. Now it's time to replace those old wheels with the Wasteland version that it's pretty cool and good looking. So the first thing I will do is to lift the vehicle using the uh, landing gear head of the crane and this way being able to remove the wheels and add the new ones. Alright, locked into position, let's try to lift it. It's too heavy. I can just lift one side. So let's try to attach on another point, like so. And let's try to lift it. Well, not perfect, but much better. I can work with that. So let's start grinding down the wheels and replacing them with the new off-road version. Okay, so let's put the um, new wheels and then let's start welding them. Right. I really love the detailing these uh, suspensions have. The wheels are a little less, but still it has this aggressive look. It really makes you feel like you want to buy every DLC that comes out. like. Look at these new lights, new offset lights. I love them, so I'm adding plenty of them and replacing wherever I can so that the rover will look much cooler than it already was, I think. Who cares about Starlink obscuring the sky? This thing will obscure everything in this planet. Okay, jokes apart, I think, uh, yeah, Keen is doing quite a good job making balanced DLCs, adding cool things and, and some useful things too, like the new blocks are very useful. And since I'm here, I'm also replacing the thrusters for the miner. In this case, I'm using the sci-fi DLC and retracting the crane. Ah, so cool. And let's have a look at the result. Hmm. Not bad, not bad, I like it. 
Okay, let's get back to the control room and see how much have been refined so far. Hmm, there is still a lot to do. So I think I will go outside mining some other uh, mineral ores and then come back and wait. But that's gonna be in another episode. Yeah, that's it for today's episode. In the next one we are going outside with this rover again and again and again until we have gathered enough minerals. But I will also show you why I have built this base close to a trade station. I'm going to buy minerals that are not available here on Triton. Bye bye. No, no. Again the same joke. Come on. Let me in. Let me inside, please. Ah, uh, finally. The door. Wait, the door. The door. Ah, I'm not